have here uh, is the Keltec SU16F. It's the Canadian version, um, it's chambered in 223 instead of 556, um, which of course is similar, but uh, not the same. And that's so you can export it out of the US. I think today is the first day any normal people have them. I may have been the first person in Canada to shoot one, I'm not too sure. Uh, I picked it up today from Calgary Shooting Center on the way home from work. Um, it's in Calgary, of course. It's a nice night. It's like 90 degrees Fahrenheit here. Um, I'm sick as hell. Uh, feeling better today and got this gun. I thought, well, you know what? It's nice enough day. I'm going to take it easy, do a little target shooting, and test it out. So, my reason for getting this gun uh, was for coyote hunting. I wanted something light. Um, the bipod built into the front end of it sold sold me, uh, the lightweight, and the price in the U.S. was a selling point. I didn't know what it would be at when it came here, and it turned out to be reasonable enough. They, they go for $7.99 here, plus, you know, GST and shipping and taxes and all that crap. Um, but it's your basic uh, model from the U.S. I've already taken the front sight off. Uh, let me grab that here quickly. Sorry, I'm not the best at videos. I'm kind of half sick, so... So this is the box it came in. It's kind of neat to pick that up. It's a small box for a rifle to come in. Of course, it was folded in half. Um, inside, it's got the owner's manual taped there. And I put the sights in here because I didn't want to lose them. I thought they were steel, um, or else I probably wouldn't have taken them off. Uh, it comes with a little tool to adjust the rear sight, which I've taken off. But the rear sight uh, just goes on your the weaver rail, and it's adjustable. It's just a little guy, I'm sure you know what they look like. And this was the front sight. It's uh, it's metal, it's aluminum, it's light, and it has two Allen screws, one at the back and one at the front, that hold it on, um, hold it onto the barrel. It's warm right now, so it won't stick on, but it goes on fairly easily. And uh, these these were in there snug. They were used, or, excuse me, Loctite was used. Um, they're not gonna fall off on their own but it wasn't the hardest thing in the world to take off either, so it's the best of both worlds. Um, the, the, di the diameter of the end of this barrel is about 0.52. I know these barrels are a pain to remove. I wanted to thread it. Um, I was hoping it was the right diameter. I could just run a die over it, and I probably could. But it's weird with this ridge. It's a little long. So I may just uh, take a flash hider from an AR-15 and and chuck it up on the lathe and enlarge the hole with no threads so it'll slip over this because it's the right length to hide all that and put an allen key on the bottom similar to how this was held on because it'll just be for looks and then I'll have a flash hider kind of hiding into that barrel. Um, the reason I took these off is I tried a couple different ring heights um, medium and tall uh, these are just leaper rings I'll explain why I went with them and these shortest ones they had none of them with the scope I wanted to use, could you see through, uh, see the sights through. With just the rings, you could, on the mediums or the large, see the sights through the rings. There's holes in the rings to see the sights. Um, problem was, once you put the scope on, the, uh, I don't know, ends of them, the bells are bigger, big enough that it obstructs that view. So there wasn't any point to do it. I wanted to keep my scope low. So I, I took the sights off, went with these low rings. I thought it was a little heavier just because it was on there. It looked like steel. So I took it off. Uh, I weighed both of these. They only weighed an ounce, so I only saved an ounce. Um, a gun with the two mags it comes with and the sights on it weighs 5.4 ounces. Uh, I have a very ac accurate scale. Um, and that's quite impressive for this gun. This isn't light, but, uh, you know, I think it'll be worth it for the looks department. Um, so, what this gun came with, of course, was those sights and two um, riveted to five round capacity plastic magazines. They don't feel the best quality, but they feel like they'd work just fine. Um, they're riveted. I'm sure Vault did that when they brought them in. They hold five rounds. I mean, what else do you expect? They, they seem to work fine. Actually, that's a lie. I haven't shot these yet. Maybe we'll do that in this video. I haven't even tried shooting them yet. Um, the 
they seem to function fine. I've ran rounds through the chamber with them. I've just been using the 10 round pistol magazines. Because in Canada, if it's designed for a pistol, they're legally allowed to have 10 rounds in them. So, uh, you know, I can legally have 10 even though this isn't a pistol. These were designed for a pistol, so it's legal. So I've been using these. Uh, they work great in it. Well, you've seen one in there. Um, the problem kind of comes to storing them in the stock like it was designed for. Um, you can store these in there, but they're not, they're not, uh, uh, you, I know it's rest on the scope, I just don't really care right now. These here have little ridges in them that aren't normal on an AR-15 mag, so they actually click in. Um, and they do fit in there nice. Uh, nice and snug, stepped. Um, they fit in there really well, so I'll keep them for that. Um, the 10 rounders, the typically are 15 10 round mags, um, they don't have that ridge, so they just kind of, you know, they're, they don't really stay in there. Um, you can use, there's some push pins in there that are meant to grip on this groove of the magazine on a 30 rounder. You know, when you store a 30 round in, uh, lengthwise. I should have brought one out to show you, but I didn't. But you can kind of take advantage of that with these. Um, you would just click it into it, and you'd want to push the front one forward as far as you could, and then the rear one. Oh, I, I, I think I did that wrong. Sorry, guys. I'm sick, and I'm kind of, kind of rushing this video. Oh, the back one's the one you push in. Sorry. See, so you, you click it into that clip. You'd push the back one in all the way, and then you have room to click this one in. And, you know, they would stay in there. Um, so yeah, it, it technically works. They're a little harder to get back out. You have a small amount of room to grab. Um, but it's possible. I'm showing great uh, gun care by resting on that scope, but don't worry about it. Yeah, it is a little bit of a pain. I've kind of got tough, mean old fingers here too, but they're kind of a bit of a pain to pull these out of there once you get them in like that. In fact, I can't even do it now. Oh ah, well, we'll leave them in there for there. They do come out, it's just a matter of fiddling with them. Um, the scope I'm using is a Bushnell uh, Trophy XLT cheap guy. That's kind of my motive for the gun. I use cheap leaper short rings. They're aluminum and lightweight. That's another motive for the gun. This scope is nice and lightweight. It's a 3x9. It's got a bullet drop rectangle, which I've grown, grown fond of. And it came with these caps for like 150 bucks Canadian. Uh, this whole package, the way you see it, with two empty mags in it, weighs 6.48 ounces. So, not very much. Um, add a sling to that, probably a couple, couple more ounces. Um, and of course, you'd want loaded bags in there, which would add whatever the weight of 10 or 20 uh, 223 bullets would be. Mm. For accuracy, I'm going to come up to the camera show. Uh, but first, I'm going to tell tell you why this is here. This is what I did my accuracy test with. I took this off one of my more accurate guns. It's a 25 zoom uh, front focal plane reticle scope. I just wanted to show you that I wasn't using a 3x9, um, and it and it would have helped. There is some inaccuracies in this gun since the barrel's mounted to this polymer. Um, action with this big heavy scope. This scope weighs like two pounds or something. It's a it's a bulky guy. With it on there and with this long front bell on it, you could see that if I grab the bottom of the barrel and top of the bell and pulled, you could see them come together a little. Um, and where that came to show in my accuracy testing was if I used this bean bag and rested there, and then if I used the bipod, which I haven't showed you that, that's built into this gun. Uh, it can be a little tricky to actually open up. It's just a matter of learning the gun, I think. You want to make sure you're always using both sides, i found. But anyways, if you open it up and use the bipod, it actually seems to push up a little here and change your point of impact a little. Uh, in the, It goes up when you use this bipod. So if you get this gun, kind of figure out what, uh, which way you're going to use it and sight it in that way. Uh, with open sights, you probably wouldn't notice point of impact change is probably a couple inches, though, um, and it was consistent. I think it just puts more weight on this gas block, kind of shifts things up a little in there. 
in this plastic frame part, the frame isn't flex or the barrel isn't flexing at all. But for accuracy wise, it wasn't uh, it wasn't terrible. I'm gonna come up here and show you what I did. So the uh, most accurate stuff I had was with the 55 grain VMAX, and you can see that there. That's about an inch and an eighth group. You got two bullets in one hole and then uh, a flyer. I, I tried some 69 grain um, hand loads that are more accurate than my other 1 to 9 twist bolt gun though. And you know I shoot like 0.25 groups with it but this one's you're at uh, you're, you're over it. Um, you got probably an inch and a half, two inch group there. I wanted to verify my VMAX load so I shot another one um, you can see it circled there. That's less than an inch group. And then I shot one more to verify it too. And uh, it was a bit bigger, of course, but about an inch and an uh, inch and three eighths or so. And this one, uh, the it's been a windy day until now when I'm videoing. So I I don't know. I'm I'm uh, I'm happy with that. I was hoping hoping for you know amazing quarter inch groups, but it uh, it is what it is, and these are lightweight guns. It's hard to make it super sturdy and everything when uh, you're dealing with plastics and polymers. So to take it with a grain of salt, if we could have AR-15s up here um, legally uh, and shoot uh, shoot pilots or uh, shoot with them outside of a range, I'd probably have one instead. But I think this will do. The main selling point for me, like I said, the bipod that's fixed on it, the lightweight, cheapness, and also the AR mag compatibility, so I can use those 10 round um, AR pistol mags. Well, you know what, this, this um, video is getting too long, uh, and I, I'm starting to feel crappy again, to be honest. So let me throw in these two 5 round mags, and uh, we'll function test them. By the way, I shot 70 bullets tonight. Not a failure, not even close to a failure. Everything's ran through it just great. Brass comes out clean, not dented up or nothing, and she seems to work. Uh, seems to work great, you know. At uh, at the very least, I think this would be a great gun to put open sights on and blast the hell out of stuff for fun. But I'm gonna try using it for a, var or a coyote rig, something I can track, pack for miles and miles and miles. Anyways, let's try these five round mags. And uh, see how they work. This scope comes with these flip caps, by the way. That was another good thing, too. The sun's right in my eyes. So if you don't hear any metal getting clanged, it's just me being a bad shot. Well, that mag worked just fine, just like... Uh, other mags. See if this one works. Call the day. <laughs> yep. Yeah, they all work. This gun has both hold open too, with the empty mag in there. Um, to release it, take the mag out and close it. Anyways, that's the uh, Canadian edition of the SU-16. I hope you liked that video because, well, it was a pain in the butt to shoot because I'm not feeling very good. But anyways, um, if you think you need one, I think the people selling them in Canada right now are uh, Wansalls, Wolverine, uh, Calgary Firearms, or Calgary Shooting Center. Uh, I think they're all sold out, however. Um, I accidentally ordered two and got ahead on the waiting list. Well, I didn't get ahead. I was just far enough up on the waiting list from two places. So I've got a second one coming. I haven't decided if I'm going to keep it as a backup gun or, or uh, sell it too. So we'll see. There may be one floating around on Canadian gun nuts or something here shortly. It depends. I'm keeping this one though. I do like it. And uh, yeah, we'll go from there. See you later, guys.